Welcome back to another episode of Bulletproof Mindset, Scotland's number one health, fitness and entertainment episode, episode podcast, that's what I meant to say. In today's episode, it is just a chit chat episode for you today. I've not done one of these, in fact, I've never done one of these solo, I don't think. It's obviously a lot easier to do when you have a co-host, but that is no longer the theme of the podcast. So a quick run through of what we got into. We speak about the controversy that has surrounded the Olympics women's boxing just now. A very, very scary time for us, not because of the event itself, but actually the misinformation that's going around us and the absolute disgust and vileness that's coming out of people's mouths, making assumptions on something that just completely isn't true. So I weigh in my opinion on that and then I can I give you a little life update on what's going on in my life personally, what's happening with the lifting club, uh, wedding, all these sort of things and then I get into Q&A. The three questions that were asked today was one, if I had to choose an Olympic sport to compete in, what would it be? Two, from someone that is dealing with knee pain when lunging and whether they should just not do that exercise whatsoever. And three, will I ever drink alcohol again? Spoiler alert. I did a couple of days ago, but I never got drunk whatsoever. So that's what you're in for in today's episode. Before we go into it though, firstly, if you're new around here, I just want to say welcome to the podcast. I release episodes every Monday and Thursday at 6am. So I hope you enjoy. And two, if you want to support this podcast and support me more, well, I am the podcast, the podcast is me. The best way you can do this, I'm trying to reach 200 five-star ratings on Spotify. So if you can head over to Spotify and leave a little five-star rating, that would mean the world to me. If you're on YouTube, consider us consider subscribing and leaving a comment below today's video ask a couple of questions in today's episode that i'd love you guys to answer so i would love to see them below so with that being said let's just get into today's episode if you have a quote-unquote bad habit in your life one of the best ways to eliminate Welcome back to another episode of Bulletproof Mindset, Scotland's number one health, fitness and entertainment episode, episode podcast, that's what I meant to say. In today's episode, it is just a chit chat episode for you today. I've not done one of these, in fact, I've never done one of these solo, I don't think. It's obviously a lot easier to do when you have a co-host, but that is no longer the theme of the podcast. So a quick run through of what we got into. We speak about the controversy that has surrounded the Olympics women's boxing just now. A very, very scary time for us, not because of the event itself, but actually the misinformation that's going around us and the absolute disgust and vileness that's coming out of people's mouths, making assumptions on something that just completely isn't true. So I weigh in my opinion on that and then I can I give you a little life update on what's going on in my life personally, what's happening with the lifting club, uh, wedding, all these sort of things. And then I get into Q&A. The three questions that were asked today was, one, if I had to choose an Olympic sport to compete in, what would it be? Two, from someone that is dealing with knee pain when lunging and whether they should just not do that exercise whatsoever. And three, will I ever drink alcohol again? Spoiler alert, I did a couple of days ago, but I never got drunk whatsoever. So that's what you're in for in today's episode. Before we go into it though, firstly, if you're new around here, I just want to say welcome to the podcast. I release episodes every Monday and Thursday at 6am. So I hope you enjoy. And two, if you want to support this podcast and support me more, well, I am the podcast, the podcast is me. The best way you can do this, I'm trying to reach 200 five-star ratings on Spotify. So if you can head over to Spotify and leave a little five-star rating, that would mean the world to me. If you're on YouTube, consider us consider subscribing and leaving a comment below today's video ask a couple of questions in today's episode that i'd love you guys to answer so i would love to see them below so with that being said let's just get into today's episode carrying out that habit welcome back to another episode of bulletproof mindset scotland's number one health fitness and entertainment episode episode podcast that's what i meant to say in today's episode it is just a chit chat episode for you today i've not done one of these In fact, I've never done one of these solo, I don't think. It's obviously a lot easier to do when you have a co-host, but that is no longer the theme of the podcast. So a quick run through of what we got into. We speak about the controversy that has surrounded the Olympics women's boxing just now. A very, very scary time for us not because of the event itself but actually the misinformation that's going around us and the absolute disgust and vileness that's coming out of people's mouths making assumptions on something that just completely isn't true 
So I weigh in my opinion on that and then I kind of give you a little life update on what's going on in my life personally, what's happening with the lifting club, uh, wedding, all these sort of things. And then I get into Q&A. The three questions that were asked today was one, if I had to choose an Olympic sport to compete in, what would it be? Two, from someone that is dealing with knee pain when lunging and whether they should just not do that exercise whatsoever. And three, will I ever drink alcohol again? Spoiler alert, I did a couple of days ago, but I never got drunk whatsoever. So that's what you're in for in today's episode. Before we go into it though, firstly, if you're new around here, I just want to say welcome to the podcast. I release the episodes every Monday and Thursday at 6am. So I hope you enjoy. And two, if you want to support this podcast and support me more, well, I am the podcast, the podcast is me. The best way you can do this, I'm trying to reach 200 five-star ratings on Spotify. So if you can head over to Spotify and leave a little five-star rating, that would mean the world to me. If you're on YouTube, consider us Subscri consider subscribing and leaving a comment below today's video ask a couple of questions in today's episode that i'd love you guys to answer so i would love to see them below so with that being said let's just get into today's episode or break the habit is by increasing the friction now what does that mean that means simply making it more more effort than what it's worth to carry out. So for example, let's talk about scrolling on your phone, scrolling on social media. We can get lost, we can lose hours and hours of our time kind of going on this doom scroll, consuming fucking shite, let's be honest. Don't get me wrong, there's, there's good information out there, but uh, I bet you can't remember three videos that you watched earlier in the day or the previous day. And let's say that's one that you, you, try, you try to break that bad habit of being on your phone too much or scrolling on social media. One way to create friction, and this was something James used to do actually, is deleting your social media apps. And the step or the thought process behind this uh, cue is that if you're looking to download or you're looking to scroll, for example, you have to go into the app store, download it, and just that time, that that kind of space, that creating that awareness to go, actually, is, I'm just doing this out of, out of habit. And this has to be up, we're up there with one or some of the best strategies you can do when looking to reduce the quote-unquote bad habits that you have. Now, inherently, what makes a good habit or a bad habit, it can, I guess it's all really subjective uh, to... The lifestyle that you're looking to live for some people drinking is bad and for others uh, drinking is good is a good habit so uh, it can be it, it can yeah it can get a little bit toxic but there's a little nugget of information so think about things that you're doing in your daily life just now that you're like man I just don't want to be doing that habit anymore how can you make carrying out that habit even more difficult and it and the flip side of this, if there's good habits that you're looking to implement, how can you reduce the friction? So this works both ways. A fantastic way that you can, uh, like let's say you want to become a, a morning workout person or you want to get up and go out a walk. Well, <laughs> something that just came into mind. Remember James telling the story of that he would get ready the night before and fall asleep in the clothes, his his outdoor clothes, so that when he woke up in the morning, he just got out of bed and went straight outside. Now, if that works for you, then fair enough. A wee bit too extreme for me, but something something might be like just laying out your gym clothes the night before or making sure your uh, meals are prepped and they're on the counter or whatever it may be. Like, But reducing the friction or increasing the friction is ways that you can manipulate and play about with your uh, habit stacking. I might actually revisit the habit episode and, and do another one in this. Now, Upcoming episodes for you guys, so this today is probably more of a chit chat, I've got a couple of questions that I have been asked that I will run through and answer towards the end of the episode, there is lots going on in fitness just now as well, there is a ton to talk about from the Olympic controversy to uh, just the Olympics in general and then uh, a few other things when it comes to Ozempic and what's kind of happening with my life just now, life is, life is good, like there's lots going on but uh, I think it's been a while since I've done a little bit of a chit chat episode so I thought that's what we'll do today. Now before we get into that if you are following me on social media you would have seen earlier in the week or earlier last week should I say that I was posting about Ozempic or Wigovi whatever you want to kind of classify it as but basically the the kind of new trendy fat loss drug that is helping or is aiding people losing weight but it's been 
one side of it has been used and abused, the other side is getting just completely written off by us profi- uh, fitness professionals and there's a lot of shame and guilt around it. So I want to do a really good deep dive episode into that. I'm consuming a lot of information, diving into a good bit of research and I'm actually reaching out to a couple of people who are on it, in the midst of it, have tried it, to be able to deliver the best possible episode for you guys. I also had someone reach out that is a pharmacist as well and I'm really interested in bringing him on the podcast uh, because his clinic, the private clinic clinic that he runs, uh, they supply this drug and I'm very curious to go into the support and all this side of things so that is a future episode that's coming I think I know a lot of you guys may be expecting this to, that episode to be today's episode but I don't want to just rush it I'm, I'm probably going to do multiple episodes on it if I'm being honest uh, so today is just yeah let's just a chit chat now where I want to start is the controversy around the boxing and the Olympics so the Paris Olympics are here, uh, if you're watching it man, it is, so first thing first, it's fantastic to see people compete, uh, especially if you were sporty during high school, like, I don't know what it is man, like watching it I'm like, oh fuck yeah, how I do that, uh, and then I'm watching them like, ah it looks easy, like, yeah, these guys are, guys and girls are so professional and so skilled at whatever it is that they're competing at, that when you're watching it you're forgetting how they are the top athlete in their sport. In the in the absolute world, which is insane, and uh, watching it, watching some of the videos and the, I think it's the was it the ten uh, k race, the what's that? A thousand, not a thousand meters, ten th- yeah, ten thousand meter race, and seeing those guys do that was it twenty six minutes, twenty seven minutes, I'm like that, man, these are absolute units. But watching all of this is a lot of hype around sport, and I've got this like Google alert on in my phone where anything I'm looking for like trending topics when it comes to fitness and health studies and all this sort of stuff and one thing that popped up during the week because the Olympics is on just now is in Japan a couple of years ago there was a college that ran a study and test on those who watch sport Um, and to cut a long story long story short it made people healthier just watching the sport because it made them inspired and motivated to kind of take action and control and kind of tapping into whatever you want to call that, that instinctual behaviour to go off and do, uh, maybe not a sport, but just go off and move your body and compete in something. So I think that was that was pretty cool to see all that sort of stuff. I'm definitely getting hyped. I was watching a few High Rocks athletes YouTube channels over the, the past week and, man, this fired me up to do one. <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. I, I just, I, I, I'm sitting to Jillian, I was like, I want to do one before the year ends, but everything's been sold out. So if you've got a ticket, if you've got a special, if you've got a doubles, a mixed doubles ticket, uh, please send it over. Let, well, don't send it over. I'll obviously pay for it, but if there's something that you can't make it for whatever reason, hit me up. I'd be happy to help out. So let's get into the controversy of what's happening in the Olympics just now. Now, if you haven't heard this, let me kind of break down or summarise the story. There is a lot of uh, a gender row or gender controversy going around with the boxing that's going on in the Olympics just now, in particular the women's boxing. And essentially what has happened is there is a lady that, go by th- that goes by the name of Amin, Amin Khalif that has been boxing in this sport for hundreds if not thousands of fights. And the controversy is that this is a trans athlete. And the reason I want to bring up this story is because I saw it come up in my feed over the last week and I jumped on the headlines because it was it was people that I follow in the fitness space that I hold their opinion pretty high of, highly. Uh, it was I seen it on the BBC, I seen it on like Lad Bible, I seen it by multiple different sources, and I already had like a, a bit of a biased view towards like trans athletes, particularly trans men who transition to women, fight or competing in a in a, a sport that is all about strength and inflicting damage on the opponent. Me and James done an episode on this like well over a hundred, yeah, about a hundred odd episodes ago where we spoke about this uh, from a place of respect, of course, but opened up the debate like what should happen when someone looks to transition and I'm of the opinion that there's definitely a big advantage or there is definitely an advantage if you're born as a man and transition to a woman from a sporting perspective there is things that go in your favour and obviously things that go against you as well no matter what gender suppressants or hormonal suppressants or enhancements that you that you get from that. Uh, anyway so I had this kind of bias but I seen it pop up and 
And rather than diving deeper into it, I actually found myself kind of turning to John. like, geez, oh, did you see that the, there's a, a, a trans man who's, or a, sorry, a trans woman fighting in this, in this sport? And I showed the videos because she was, she's dominated her first couple of fights. And later in the week, I seen a post from someone who's very, very thorough with their information. And I seen him weigh, on, weigh in on this. And I was reading the caption. I was like, wow. Everything that I was reading about this quote-unquote trans athlete was straight up bullshit and misinformation. I was actually a bit, I was really embarrassed because I was speaking to friends. I never posted anything about it, uh, but I could have easily hopped on that episode and it kind of reminded me of what the most important lesson is here. Regardless, like putting the controversy aside, no matter who you follow on social media, who you hold um, opinions over or hold the, the opinion in a high regard, you should always, always, always do your due diligence when it comes to receiving information. That being said, this podcast is definitely one but to hold a higher standards of ourselves and not just tapping into headlines and just going, yeah, fuck, you see that? Because this, this poor lady, like, has been boxing her whole life and is now in the midst of this gender uproar of whether she has a man or woman. Now, she has been born on her birth, on her birth, birth certificate in Nigeria as a woman. She's came up through life as a woman and she is competing in a sport that she is found to love or had a, a, a just a great loving towards and has now got all of this worldwide press on her saying that she's a man. Now, why has why this been brought up? So, like, why is it not like, well, that's on your birth certificate. It should be pretty clear cut. It brings up a very interesting conversation that... There is certain tests that obviously Olympi that Olympic athletes will go through, um, one being a gender test and, and several other tests, whatever, depending on what it is that you're competing in. Now, the controversy that's coming up here is that Amin has been born with higher testosterone than the average woman, let's say. So there's a genetic advantage there. Just like there's a genetic advantage for Michael Phelps, who has a longer torso and shorter legs. Uh, there's there's many examples of genetics playing an important role when it comes to the sport that someone plays. Now, in this example, be, having a higher testosterone, it, it, this is where it's getting from, I don't want to overcomplicate this, but it becomes very complex. And it is a complex matter, and it's not, I don't think it's one for us to debate on. I think that's one for the, the kind of higher-ups of these organisations to kind of make clear, standardised rules that, that kind of go into this. But I think it's really, really, really unfair that this poor woman has been kind of written off as a trans athlete when she has worked her whole life to get into the position that she's in. So she it's not as if she's dominated the sport from day one. She has had many a losses. But what's something that's really disgusting about this whole thing is the absolute vile and straight up rudeness that's coming from both men and women that are just going straight into attack mode to try and tarnish someone's name and bring them down without actually looking at the clear facts. Now, there is a deeper conversation, as I said, to be had on where do you draw the line when there is a, a really genetic, like a clear genetic advantage on someone's life? But that they have just been born with and I mean definitely has one but does that mean she is any lesser of an athlete than any of the other women that's competing in this sport? Absolutely not. You Look at the example that is maybe a little bit easier to understand. We're talking about hormones and testosterone and all these different things that play as an advantage into speed, power, recovery, performance, all these sort of things but when you compare this to an like another example, the Michael Phelps, Phelps example, his body type of what he was born with, the long torso, the long arms, places him at a better advantage to compete in the sport of swimming. Now, if he was born with, well, if I I had, had or he had my body shape, kind of the shortened torso and, and short shorter arms, then he would be at a massive disadvantage. Now, put Michael Phelps in the running track, no matter how good an athlete he is, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be a gold medalist. He absolutely wouldn't because when you look at the runners and the kind of aesthetics or the genetic component of runners, it's kind of longer legs, shorter torsos, so it's kind of flipped on its head. Now, 
where do you go here? Look, we need people to be this height, this weight, these chromosomes on their fucking uh, biological uh, test data. Like, it becomes a very, very complex discussion and it becomes very hard to control that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this folds out. Now, what annoys me more about this, actually, is the opponent that she just recently faced. So... The opponent, there was a lot of controversy around this after her, I mean's first fight. Her second her second fight was against an opponent, another woman, that goes by the name of Angelina Carini. I think I've pronounced that correctly. So this fight lasted 46 seconds. So I believe, I mean, through two or three jabs and the woman put up her hand and she's like, I've never been punched this hard before. She's saying all this sort of thing to the... To the uh, press and obviously they're jumping on the back of this and all this sort of stuff I looked at this woman's training log right Angela uh, Carini and I'm not doing this to bash her because she's obviously to get to that level you have to put in some amount of graft hard work and effort right but to say all that sort of stuff like looking at our training logs and what she's doing and all that like there is a there is definitely a genetic component from just a physiological standpoint. If you look at I mean, she is definitely taller. She's a, looks like she's got a bit more dense bone dense uh, dense bones, should I say? And the striking of both them, it's not as if it's like this perfect sleek punches that she's had. It's it looks like reasonable jabs. If you look at any other woman's boxing, there is no amount of difference or the telltale difference than what you can see visually looking at the power of that punch. Now, I'm no, I'm no expert in watching fighting sports or martial arts or anything like this, but I know it's going to feel a lot different to being hit, but to say all that sort of stuff is definitely a bias. She's went into that with the wrong mentality. I, I mean, this is, again, this is my speculation, but... If I'm fighting an opponent, right, I try to put myself in in the shoes of of this lady Angela. So she's won her fight. She's seen that her opponent has got all this press. I mean, it's worldwide. You can't get away from this. And it's like, I mean, as a man who's transitioned to a woman, and you're thinking, ah, oh, this this is shit. She's robbing me of this title. Um, like, I, I'm physically not going to be able to overpower her. And being in that mindset, going into that fight, a couple of punches in, you start throwing up your hands and saying, look, this isn't great for my health, I'm I'm not playing to this. To me, that's a bit sus. Like, that's so sus. Because throughout the week, I mean, I've seen opinions of people saying, and rightly so, like, if you don't know the roots of the information and you just think a man transitioned to a woman fighting in a, a combat sport, that man who transitioned to a woman definitely has an advantage and is definitely a risk of health and safety to the opponent's advantage, right? That was all the information coming out at that point. Now, that lady, Angela, going into that fight, there was probably a bit of fear, a bit of worry, and everything's enhanced. How many times do you have you worked out, right? Let's flip this on its head. We can all remember that workout where we were just talking negative in our head. I can't be bothered doing this. Oh, I'm not really feeling it. And before you know it, you've talked yourself out of lift. You're like, ah, nah, I've, not, I've got zero strength today, just by the power and the bias that you have in your mindset. And this is what I believe has happened on this fight. It's not that the, there's been a sheer dominance on the means part. I think it's been there's been a good couple of hooks being thrown, but the controversy just around the whole po politics that comes to the gender side of this thing is just thrown this fight off completely. So it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out, but you as a consumer or we as a consumer have to be very, very careful on what we do with the information that we watch on a daily basis. Now, there is an argument here that I mean is born with is it XX genes, which airs on the side of not airs, that that is that makes the makeup the biological makeup of a man instead of XY genes. Now <laughs> there is so many variations of this. You can get XXY, which means there is more female genes being born in a man and it's, it's just it's such a rabbit hole to go down and I don't want to overcomplicate this but it's a very complex subject to get into and it becomes like where do you draw the line so his argument says maybe she's been misgendered with our birth certificate on on our birth certificate but she's been born with a uterus she's been born with all these other things and it becomes like right what the, what the fuck are we even arguing over here why are we getting so petty on this information because if we open that can of worms, as I said, are you going to say to someone like Michael Phelps or 
all the other athletes who have done so well to qualify and be able to compete in the Olympics. Oh, sorry, your torso isn't 57 fucking inches. You need to have a 57 inch torso. These become things that are out with our control from an athlete perspective. We can't train this, you know, you know what I mean? So, like, I absolutely draw the line when it comes to, like, men should compete in men's sports, women should compete in women's sports. I don't believe there should be any crossover. I think if we're going to open up and be more diverse as an uh, organisation or as a company or as, as just the whole world, then we should create categories that's for the transition of these people, trans men, trans women, etc. Just if you, I mean, if you look at the Special Olympics, for example, there is certain criteria that you have to have from a disability perspective to compete in a race. So that is an example where it's very hard to please everyone. And I don't know what the... I can't imagine someone's circumstance when you're born as a man and you want to be a woman, what that feels like, because all you want to do is compete in a women's sport. But unfortunately, you're you're not a woman, right? You're born as a man, so you, should, you need to be filtered into your category. It doesn't mean you're any less of a human being, but they should be your own category when it comes to sports. So, I it's just it's so bizarre. It's so it's such a head fuck as well. Now, the biggest thing on this, as I said, is the media outlets. Media love this shit because you can, like, if you look at the comment section, you just be controversial in a post and boom, 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 engagement, free advertising. Um, I've seen, like, Lad Bible, BBC. I've seen some well-respected fitness names post about it and just getting caught up on this. Now, whether they know the deeper roots of the actual information and or not, I think there was definitely media outlets to that played to the misinformation, and that's the dangerous thing here. I mean, I can only imagine what I mean. Khalif's mental health is like just now. Have fair play to her still showing up and fighting now. I think it's is it the semi-finals? I think it's just happened. So we'll see what happened. Oh, so quarterfinals. So we'll see what happens in the semi-finals. So she's on track to get a bronze. And yeah, it'll be very, very interesting to see how this how this plays out. But I wanted to weigh in on that because it is fitness news and I like to be in a health and fitness podcast. I think it's important to have these conversations. I'd love to know what you think about this personally. Uh, I believe I got all the facts right. Like there's maybe some stuff that I've even missed, but I, as I said, I was very biased at the start when I seen the headlines. But it wasn't until a couple of days later where I seen other sources of information saying that no, that's complete bullshit. And the best way you can take any bit of information is always going, okay, that sounds interesting. My emotions getting involved in this. I'm getting very hyped up because it plays to a bias that I already have. However, let me check myself and let me chase the opposing argument. So in this example, trans women fights in women's sports, like fucking hell, that's crazy. You should never be allowed to do that. Hang on a minute. Is this person trans? Is what what's the underlying story here? And the maddest thing about this whole thing as well is that the Olympic Committee fumbled this. Like they never I, I don't know if I don't know if it was an accident or they just they never thought it would reach this wide of an audience, but they inherently misinformed the world with this information. It is fucking bizarre. It's so mental. Uh, so I, we'll see how this plays out. We'll see how this plays out. I think one thing that is definitely highlighted is the absolute disgust and hatred that we have as human beings. It's just straight up fucking terrible. Like some of the words from a, I know it's the whole sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. But some of the posts and the vile <laughs> comments that were made towards this poor woman, I, how it's actually commendable of her. Getting into the right headspace, and going look, what like if you I think if you ask an Olympic athlete, would they take twenty years off their lifespan to win a gold medal? Medal, I think is it like every single one of them would reduce their lifespan to win that gold medal because that's how much it means to them. And some of this goes to like a deeper root. Like some people are from the complete slums of the world and don't have the same advantages that we do in kind of Western civilization, and the to be have all of that going against you, man, it must have must feel fucking horrific. But yeah, I hope the people who made these vile videos and comments and whatnot kinda own up and say, look, I didn't get my facts right, hold my hands up and make a sincere apology towards getting this information wrong. 
I think it's very scary how social media is these days because it's just kicked open a can of worms and it was like boom, it was overnight, it was overnight. But yeah, we need to, we definitely need more kindness in the world and neutral opinions and everything. That's the hardest thing. Like something plays in our emotions that we have passion towards or we're emotionally passionate about. Automatically, we get our backs up. Anything to do with fitness and health, I'm the same. Like we talk about the Zempic thing I was mentioning earlier in today's episode, that initially when that came on the scene, I was like, "Fuck's sake!" I was like, "Look, you don't need a Zempic, blah blah blah." Instead of going, "Right, what is the need for Zempic? Why would people take it? And what is the psychological behaviours that goes behind this? Because it's not as blatant. Some things are like, don't get me wrong, some things absolutely are, but emotion clouds our judgment on." <laughs> absolutely everything uh, so yeah so look, speaking of uh, the Olympics and social media and all this sort of stuff plob- problem problematic phone usage is a new term that starts is starting to pop up and this uh, term is similar to the behaviours associated with gambling alcohol sex drugs all that sort of stuff so problematic phone usage is now one thing that people are keeping a close eye on, as young as, I think one of the things I read was, as young as 13 to 16, the 80% of uh, kids that they self-surveyed and asked them questions on report that they have, they recognise instances of themselves just, it's referred to as doom scrolling, just being on their phone, being on social media. That is going to be very interesting as, as to how it plays out. So what else is happening in this week or over the last couple of weeks? Well, I had a wedding on Thursday. Uh, it was a good friend Brian and Morgan's wedding. Absolutely fantastic day. Weather was beautiful. Venue was beautiful. The couple were obviously beautiful. Uh, and it was good catching up with James as well. He was there in his fine spirit. So for the OG listeners that are listening, James is still thriving in life and absolutely in his element at a wedding. And other than that, I'm kind of pushing a lot of the lifting club. So if you don't know what that is and you're listening to this episode just now, and this is the first time that you're hearing it, why the hell are you not following me on social media? If you are following me on social media, why do you have my stories and that fucking muted then? Engage more with my content because then you won't miss out on fantastic opportunities like this. But essentially every single Sunday at 10am here at the Bulletproof Studios HQ, I'm doing a free lifting club. And this is just for everyone, beginners, advanced lifters, just a bunch of people to get together and we're going to lift weights for an hour or so. I've changed it up a couple of times. Uh, I say a couple of times, I've only done it once. The second one is tomorrow. But essentially we are breaking down uh, compound movements, doing a bit of mobility, a wee bit of power work and then just having a bit of fun as a group of individuals, getting our sweat on and uh, doing something good to start the, the Sunday right. So the first one that I done was a success. I had good fun doing it. I was really nervous, must admit. Uh, just I don't know. I think you, even though it's free and people are like, yeah, look, I just want to be with other people and lift weights. I was getting a wee bit nervous, like, oh, it needs to be this. It needs to be perfect. But look, seeing life, there's no such thing as perfect. We just need to be consistent and make little small changes with whatever it is that you're pursuing. This is the same for diet, for workouts. Just start it and start to refine it over time. So that is this Sunday. Now, in fact, to the point of this episode, it was yesterday, but the next one is this Sunday, and these will continue to run every single Sunday uh, until death do us part. I, I, I believe I'm going to commit to that. Now, I'm not saying I'm go- I might go on holiday from time to time. That may be the only time that we won't be able to do this, but I'm hoping this next chapter of my coaching and the next chapter of Bulletproof Coaching, Bulletproof Mindset, opens up more opportunities to bring in other personal trainers to work within the brand and and work on something that I'm going to release very soon, but I won't speak about it too much just now because it's in the works and there's no point me saying something that might not actually come to fruition. <laughs> anyway, today's episode is a and a episode, so let's get into the questions that have been asked from you lovely lot. Now, if you want to ask a question or get your question answered on a podcast episode like this, then make sure you're following me on Instagram. Every now and then I'll throw up question boxes and I'll do one of these once a month. I might actually put this out to my email list as well. So if you aren't on the email list, check out the link below, download the free lower back mobility guide that I've got or download the free 30 day workout plan and you'll be added to that and look out for uh, emails from myself with more nuggets of information. All right, let's get into it. Question one. 
I like this question just based around the Olympics. If you had to choose an Olympic sport, which Olympic sport would it be? So if I had to compete in the Olympics, it's a really hard one. Now, I love team games. I like being the team player and all that sort of stuff. But I also like the solo venture. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I loved High Rocks. It was me and Jillian. And I think that's more to do, it was me and my wife that were doing, uh, competing in this event. I think I might actually do a solo High Rocks because there's something about doing the solo events that you're like, yeah, fucking, I'm the man, blah, 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 right? So if I had to do an Olympic sport, it'd definitely be a solo one. I'm trying to think of what it would be. It wouldn't be any of the sort of accuracy ones like shooting or the bone arrows or darts or uh, darts in the Olympics. <laughs> I don't even know if they are. But uh, speaking of that, I don't know, uh, crossbow, that's the one I'm thinking of. The crossbow, if anyone's seen the madness that happened with, I think it was the South Korea or North Korea, I know that is not one that you want to absolutely mix up, but essentially in the archery, the woman was ready to take her shot and a bee landed on her finger just as she released the trigger, which meant that her shot was thrown off. That is a madness in itself. What's even madder is that they still managed to win a gold medal. Now, I know this isn't solos because they still do it in teams, but you have like the solo rowing and you have sprints and 1,500 metres, 400 metres, 800 metres. I think I would do... Something, I, I don't think I'm fast enough to do a 100 metre sprint, but I think I'm fast enough, because if I remember back to high school, it was 200 metre a sprint, or was it 400? It may have been the 200 metre sprint. I think I would do that. That would be my sport of choice. Now, these questions that I'm answering, I'm actually going to put it back to you guys. What would be the sport that you would do? I'd love to know in the comments below this video. If you're watching on Spotify, you can now comment to this. If you don't have the ability to do Update your fucking apps. Come on, stop, stop. You've probably not updated your apps in a long time. It's probably well overdue. So get it done. So yeah, that would be the Olympic sport I would do. You know what? I'm actually going to look up what is the Olympic sport. So see, like some of these things I didn't even realise, right? So in the Olympic Games, you have basketball 3v3. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, let me see if, I must admit, some of these sports I've never even heard of. Nordic Combine, what is that? Oh, that's the... Skiing stuff. See, um, I wouldn't say I'm I'm good at the winter sports. Something like Taekwondo, the point stuff, like that'd be pretty cool, but I'm absolute dog shit at that. Yeah, I think it's going to have to be the running. It's going to have to be the track. Uh, yeah, it would need to be track. Solo track. I was going to say, maybe I could do it in the future, but unfortunately, I am an enhanced athlete from a TRT perspective, so that rules me out of that. Uh, you know what? I don't even know why I've not said this, but Olympic lifting would be where I have to go. Something that just is badass. I'd just love to lift a heavy ass weight and fucking send it. So let me change that. Weightlifting would be where I do it. So yeah, I would like to do the Olympic weightlifting. That or the kind of shortened distance track stuff would be pretty cool to do. Let's see. So the weightlifting actually is going to be out this week. I'm really excited to watch that. Now you got some incredible lifts that you're going to see in that which I'm excited to watch. So as I said, let us know what your answer to that would be. Okay, next one's more around the fitness side of things. So I get knee pain when lunging. Should I rest this completely until it's healed? Or is there any other drills or exercises that I can do to fix this? So again, a very individual one, very complex one. You probably want to do a bit of testing on this. But if you are not able to lunge forward, then a, a lunge, just going off based experiences, I've had a bunch of clients that's had knee pain that have been able to squat but not been able to lunge, which I found very interesting. Diving deeper into that, I don't have the science behind this. I just have pure antidotal movement patterns that I've tested with them and seen, right, okay, they get pain here. Let me try and strengthen that range of motion from wherever it is the, the, the crossover is. So if you can't do a lunge, try and see if you can do a reverse lunge. Or first things first, try and see if you can hold on to something and get the knee fully flexed. If you can't, because there's an extreme amount of pain, then definitely need to go down the physio route because you might have done some kind of deeper... With this, a physio isn't a bad shout at all. Now, find a good one, find one that's going to give you mobility drills to do and also give you a kind of strength training or will work with a personal trainer through this at the same time. That is a killer combination because you get the benefit of fixing the injury or rehabbing the injury, but also strengthening your body at the same time. Now, most people will just write off their journey at this point, so don't be that person. Don't be 
Don't be that woman who's like, I'm not I'm not looking to train at all. I'll just need to skip all my lower body exercises. There'll be exercises that you can still do. Now, think to yourself why you're doing the lunge just now. Is it because you're running? Is it because you're trying to build a part of your body? Is it just because you like working out? Whatever the answer is to that, try and substitute it with something else. So if you're doing it from a lower body perspective, is there other exercises you can do in the gym to replace that in the time being? For example, the hamstring a leg curl machine or can you do reverse lunges can you do the leg press can you do a squat can you do a tiny weighted step up there's tons of stuff to go through this and to give you advice on natural knee pain that might be better suited to someone that's in the physio space but what i've seen in the past is exercises like light squats and having control over the muscle part so i had, I had a client who in fact i've had i've actually had so many clients have knee issues so dislocated their knee something like 15 times in playing football uh knee pain for years and years like that is usually the two categories of people that I've, I've had and i find that it's just a weakness in their muscle so when you're lunging forward there's too much pressure going through that knee joint the muscles that surround that joint are just too weak so strengthening the quad and strengthening the calf and hamstring and just getting them all to fire and work together single leg step ups uh, single leg RDLs, fantastic exercises or substitutes for that. And if you can't step up because it's too much pain, maybe reduce the height. If you still can't step up, focus on controlling the step on the way down, getting your um, your bum cheek, your actual glute to be involved with that movement because that is a big a big driver of the lower part of the body. So I hope that one helps. Okay, last question I have in. Um, Simply because I didn't throw up a question box and <laughs> I'm picking questions that have been asked over the last couple of weeks from clients and uh, months from, from you guys on my social media. Will you ever drink alcohol again? Now, I know I've, I've well, I say I, but on this podcast, we've we done a, a very good episode on alcohol, another episode that I want to revisit, but I'm not completely sober. I don't know. I actually struggle to answer this. In fact, I, I think I'm getting closer to the reason why I still drink alcohol on nights out. Now, I, me and Jillian, we have, we have a great relationship where we're both on the same page that we don't feel the need to drink, but we can still go out and have fun. We can go to places like a wedding, still dance. Well, I must admit, well, let's talk through the wedding I was at recently. I had a couple of Jack Daniels, that's my drink of choice, but I, I wasn't drunk whatsoever. I felt a little bit of buzz initially after it, but because it was a long day and there was long periods of time in between these drinks, they're just sort of nursing it. And the main thing I wanted to drink for was, one, I, I needed to have something in my hand. I felt a bit awkward. And I think that comes back to a confidence issue. And two, even though I was, I, I felt sober the whole night, I managed to actually get up on the dance floor for the first time and not feel awkward dancing. And me, Gavin, James and, and Jillian done this. All four of us completely sober. And uh, even Brian, the guy who was getting married, was sober the whole time. However, his dance moves, you would definitely think he was out of his face with the fucking, the way his hips are moving. But putting that, that to aside, that's a fantastic skill to, to be able to work on because that's a sub subconscious thing that we all have, especially if you've been brought up drinking in your friend groups and whatever. So, yeah, I, it's not that I'll never have a drink again. I think if it's an occasion from a celebrity, is that the right word? A celebrity? No, it's not celebrity. A celebrity celebration point of view I'm gonna go with that right from a celebration point of view I think I still like celebrating with a alcoholic beverage because it gives you that buzz and it gives you that dunt but I will, will probably never get into the state of being absolutely out of my face it's just not worth it what it does the day after and the sluggishness the cognitive de decrease in your ability to speak through it as the night goes on like why and it <laughs> it becomes even more harder to do especially if your friends are doing that so i don't know i can't see myself getting absolutely in my face but here never say never but yeah i think um that's that's where i'm i'm at with alcohol just now it's more a confidence thing for me it's like going oh right okay everybody else has got a drink right so i'll just i'll just drink and i'm going to dive i'll, I'll definitely dive deeper into a, a, an alcohol episode on things that i've noticed especially recently that because I never had a game plan going in, I was like, okay, I'll have a couple of drinks. But those couple of drinks turned into like eight, I think, over the course of the day. Now, I know eight, eight drinks would get people steaming, but 
nursing them throughout the day and having long periods in between, I was not drunk whatsoever. Initially, I was like, oh, man, I could feel myself getting getting steaming here. But then it was like, right, okay, that feeling passed. That's what muscle can do. That's why I have a fast metabolism, metabolise that alcohol quick. And, uh, yeah, we moved on with the day. So that wraps up today's episode. I know it's a wee bit of a mixed bag, a wee bit of life update, current events, questions from you guys. But thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy whatever it is that you get up to. If you're needing help with anything fitness related, look, reach out. I am one message away from helping you. So if you're looking for support, head over to my Instagram at Coach Crosser. You can find the the mindset page, the Bulletproof Mindset podcast page at Bulletproof Mindset underscore underscore. We'd appreciate a follow if you aren't already following that page. And also, if you made it this far and you've got to the end of this episode and you haven't left a five star rating on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or sub- subscribe to us on YouTube, then please do. It's the best way you can support me and this journey of becoming a better podcaster. So, Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy whatever it is you get up to and I'll see you on the next episode.